Felix Bloch is a Nobel Prize winner that was a professor for many years at Stanford University. And he used to say that never underestimate the joy that people get in hearing something that they already know. I might add to Dr. Bloch that as long as you explain it clearly the second time. <laughs> but uh, in this section you will see a lot of things that you already know. Uh, but but we're going to take them from mirrors and apply them to lenses. All right, this is what you uh, have seen before verbatim. Uh, all of these equations are exactly the same as we did for the mirror equation and the magnification equation. The only thing that's different are these words up here. State the thin lens and the magnification equations. So before I had mirror, and the conditions for real virtual, all the rest of this is the same. These equations, uh, describe. you can use them to find the, the position of the image if you know where the object is and the focal length. Or alternatively, as you will do in the lab, you can use these equations to figure out what the focal length of the lens is based on where the object and the image are located. But uh, this is called the thin lens equation. This is called a magnification equation. Uh, everything has the same meaning as before. Uh, oh, here's one difference. Um, the focal length, and actually I need to make this correction in the PowerPoint. Focal length, um, this is for a concave mirror. It was greater than zero for a concave mirror. But now, this is for a converging lens. And f is less than zero for a diverging lens. Okay. Uh, object distance d naught is greater than zero for a real object. D naught less than zero for a virtual object. Image distance, um, etc. D i is greater than zero for a real. D i is less than zero for virtual. Object height. Uh, image height, upright, inverted, same deal here, enlarged, reduced, and unmagnified. Everything's the same except for those uh, uh, couple of words that I pointed out. Let's do an example. The real image formed by a camera lens. 1.7 meter tall person, that's our object. Standing 2.5 meters in front of a camera, that's our object distance. D not. This is our object height, H not. The camera uses a converging lens whose focal length is 0.05 meters. That's the focal length, F. It's converging, so we want F to be a positive number. Find the image distance and determine whether the image is real or virtual. Happy day, no big deal. Um, we know that 1 over F is 1 over d naught plus 1 over d i. We can solve that for 1 over d i by subtracting 1 over d naught from both sides. And this is what we get. Plugging in the numbers, the focal length we have, the object distance we have, we get 19.6 inverse meters keeping the units to remind ourselves that that's in 1 over meters and that that gives us 1 over the image distance. So we need to take 1 over this to get the actual image distance. So this 0.05 is 1 over that number. So that gives us a, uh, a real image. How do I know it's real? It's because this number is positive. Remember in the previous slide we talked about, and, and also in the previous chapter, if di is positive, that means it's a real image. If di is negative, it means it's a virtual image. All right, so we're actually supposed to find the magnification as well. We've got di and d naught. Um, this is just the magnification equation, minus di over d naught. Plug in the values that we already have, and this gives a magnification. So its magnitude, its absolute value is less than 1. 
that says that the image is going to be reduced. And then we also know that the magnification is HI over H naught. So we're actually interested in the height of the image. So we can solve this equation for the height of the image by multiplying both sides by H naught. That gives me the height of the image is uh, magnification times H naught. Magnification, we just calculated, it's right here, times the height of the object gives the height of the image. That's an inverted image. How do I know it's inverted? We say because HI is a negative number. And I say you're absolutely right. This says that the image is inverted. Had that been a positive number, it would have been a, um, an upright image. Let's see if I can um, fit on here a diagram to, to show graphically what we've just done. This, so this example will actually connect our graphical understanding of where the images are with this equation understanding. So here's the lens. The focal length of the lens is 0.05 meters. So that's, let's put our focal point here, and we know that this is 0.05 meters. Happy day. Um, the object, the person, which is the object, is standing two and a half meters in front of the camera. Well, that's a lot bigger than 0.05. So this object is going to be way out here. This is probably not to scale, but probably close enough for our purposes. So this is object. Well, let's just do the ray diagram and see where the image is and see what it looks like. Paraxial ray. Well, let's, see, let's make the focal points. Okay, that one like that. This one passing through the focal point, hitting the lens, coming off as a paraxial ray. And then a third ray coming right smack through the middle of the lens. Looks like these three rays are converging right here. So there's going to be a little tiny image right here. It's going to be inverted because it's below the axis. And is it going to be, is the size of that image going to be small or large compared to the size of the object? And you say, well, pretty small, <laughs> looks like. So let's see if that squares with what we've found out. Is the image real? Yeah, sure enough it is. Is its distance um, pretty close to the lens? Yes, it is. The image, of the image distance is about 0.05. It's just a little beyond the focal point. The focal point is 0.05. This is 0.051. Just, just as we've seen in this diagram, the focal point was here. The image was just a little bit outside that focal point. Uh, was the, is the image reduced? Yeah, it sure enough is. And is it inverted? Yeah, sure enough it is. So that's how you can check your math using the graphics or use the graphics and then do the math. Uh, either way, you can be double sure that you've got, you've got the right answer. The human eye, as I've mentioned, is, is an amazing instrument. It's just fantastic. And I want to say a little bit about how it works, and then we'll do a couple more examples of how to apply these equations. Um, the optical components of the eye include the, the cornea, which has an index of refraction of 1.38. So that's a little bit more than water, which is 1.33. Uh, the aqueous humor is basically like water, 1.33. Then the lens, which has, oh, I don't know where that index refraction went. It got deleted somehow. It's a little bit, it's uh, a little bit more than the cornea, as I remember, 1.4 or so. Then the vitreous humor has an index of refraction pretty close to water as well, 1.34. About 70% of the refraction. So we have all these optical components that um, 
that occur, about 70% of the refraction occurs at the air cornea boundary. So it's this boundary right here between the air and the surface of the cornea. That's where most of the refraction or the bending of refraction or the bending of light occurs. Uh, the lens contributes only about 20% uh, because the surrounding materials have similar indices of refraction. So here we got 1.34 in the in the vitreous humor, we got 1.33. The lens is 1.38 or 1.4, somewhere along in there. I'll put it on the PowerPoint when it's uploaded so you'll see it there. Um, but the lens forms a very important role, and that is that its shape can be manipulated by these muscles. So it can be uh, elongated or, or um, with the ciliary muscles. That, that change its shape and allow you to uh, image things at different distances. So the function of the lens is important because its focal length can be um, shortened by contraction of the ciliary muscle. This allows sharp images for objects located between the near point, just 25 centimeters for people in their 20s, and the far point at infinity. So the near point is the, is the distance from your eye at which you can come to focus. If, if you got a book that's this close to your nose, you're not going to be able to come to focus. Um, so the near point for you guys is about uh, 25 centimeters, uh, more for me and more for uh, older folks. So um, a far-sighted person is, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the far-sighted and near-sighted um, persons. Just a little bit. Refractive power of a lens. The diopter. Um, when you get a prescription for eyeglasses, you'll, it'll be in diopters. And that's actually, for, for the, the, the diopters, it's just one over the focal length. So you measure the, measure the focal length of the lens in meters, take one over that, that's the diopters. So, uh, if the focal length is very small, that means it's a big fat lens and it's, it's really curving the, the light a lot. If the focal length is small, then the, diopter, the number of diopters is large. So, um, so refractive power, nearsighted person, um, this refractive power in diopters, you're going to need a what kind of lens is, has a focal length that is negative? And you say, diverging lens. So you need a diverging lens for nearsighted folks. And a converging lens, because the focal length is positive, for a far-sighted person. A couple of examples. Uh, eyeglasses for a nearsighted person. A nearsighted person has a far point located only 521 centimeters from the eyes. So this is as far as, as his or her eyes can image an object. So if an object is beyond that, uh, this uh, nearsighted person is not going to be able to create a sharp image with his or her eye. And so what you do is you give that person a diverging glasses, a diverging lens. And assuming that eyeglasses are to be worn two centimeters in front of the eye, so this is two centimeters. Find the focal length needed for the, diverging, for the diverging lens of the glasses so that the person can see distant objects. So you want an object, you want to be able to see objects out in infinity. You, want to, you don't want to be stuck uh, only being able to clearly see objects that are 521 centimeters from the eye. So the way to do that is you say that the object, you want an object that's infinity. So let's put in infinity for that object. And one over infinity is our old friend zero. So this guy just get, 
gets killed. And um, the 519 centimeters is the dif difference between this 521 centimeters and the two centimeters in front of the eye, which is the, um, let's see if we got that right. The, okay, so the far point is 521 centimeters from the eye. So that's from here to here. Well, now we've stuck a diverging lens in between those two things. And the distance between here and here is 521 centimeters. So the distance between this far point and the lens itself is 519 centimeters. And the image um, is going to be a virtual image. Let's see, hang on here. which tells me that 1 over f equals minus 1 over minus 519, and the focal length of that lens must be 519 centimeters. Yeah, and so here is the virtual image formed by that diverging lens. We get a, a real image over here on the retina. That's what's causing me to pause a little bit. But the virtual image is formed at that point at that image distance. And that virtual image is formed right, right there where you can already focus. And so you basically trick the eye into being able to see a distant object clearly by placing it at its um, far point of that nearsighted eye. All right, contact lenses for the farsighted person. So farsighted person has a near point located at 210 centimeters from the eyes. So this far-sighted person can see objects clearly that are far away, but can't see objects that are close. And obtain the focal length of the converging lens in a pair of contacts that can be used to read a book held at 25 centimeters. So this now is going to be 25 centimeters away. And we want to place a converging lens there in order to be able to image that object. Same deal, 1 over f is 1 over d naught plus 1 over di. And um, the virtual image formed by the converging lens, that's going to be virtual. So it's going to be at minus uh, 210 centimeters. In this case, we don't have to worry about it because the distance between the lens and the eye because it's contact lens. It's right up against the cornea. So 1 over 25 for the object distance. And this tells you that the um, focal length of that converging lens needed for that far-sighted person must be 28.4 centimeters. So if you wanted to find the refractive power in that case, the diopters, then you'd express this focal length in meters. And then you take one over that to get that refractive power measured in diopters.